Congratulations. Congratulations. You Congratulations. 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 Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to that, right smash there. like. <laughs> that right there is now our advertisement. <laughs> I'm just cut out right. the like, comment, subscribe. It's just gonna be that. Damn on that bell. <laughs> 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 Dab on that bell. Hi, welcome to Heat Wave. My name <laughs> is Brian Belcher. Don't want to close my eyes. Jarris Mitchell here doesn't want to close his eyes. I don't want to fall. Brittany doesn't want to fall asleep. Because <laughs> Hutch is sitting there. <laughs> Hutch is sitting there. I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> and, and there's Chris. It's the Hutch Hutcherson. Welcome to Heat Wave. We're going to talk about video games and such. We tr- <laughs> this is, God and damn it. Such. And such. <laughs> Actually, we have a lot of video game topics on this episode. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Stop Usually just one at a time. Dang on I the table. I cut it out. That's, that's <laughs> bad. Uh, fuck. Uh, what, uh, what, what's it called in the movies where they get the people who just do the sound effects? Grip? Dub? The dub know. over? Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, Jairus. Tell know. us what we're talking about first today. I want to talk about video game marketing. <laughs> What's your favorite like video game marketing thing? The one where they sent brass knuckles to all the uh, ga- video game journalists and then had to request them to be mailed back because they sent an illegal <laughs> weapon. <laughs> what Why game was that? Yeah, what game yeah. was uh, I forgot. It was. Oh, it was an. It was oh it was um Mafia Two I believe I think it's oh, one of the Mafia games. I that's think hilarious. EA sent them out and they realized they did an oopsie and then sent a mail to everyone. Hey, send that shit back. To it's us. important <laughs> to put like the little nub on the inside so you can claim it's a belt buckle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. That is amazing. Or they could have made like foam ones or something. Yeah. They have to be real. That's hilarious. <laughs> that though. is amazing. I did not <laughs> brass. Brass is heavy, so it's got to be expensive to ship that. Yeah. I yeah. completely forgot about that. Yep, it's been a hot minute. Uh, for me, I'm going to have to say, actually, the game that we were referencing, Saints Row 4, they sent a bunch of journalists a three-foot-long uh, purple dildo bat. Mm, that oh, was good. The violator. <laughs> Didn't know about that. That was a real item that, that you can buy. That was a weapon in the game, right? Yeah, it's a weapon yeah. in the game, and they mm. made it real, and then they shipped it to a bunch yeah. of journalists. And I, I really want one. <laughs> 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 they go for about uh, $800 on eBay okay. though, when they pop up. Well, uh, oh, I would love to get that one. That's you one. should get your company to yeah, do make more a release. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a disaster. We have to put that in like tubes. You you would like, have now. To... I'm thinking of like how do we mail that out? <laughs> yeah, like, of course you I are. have to think of the logistics of like what well, box size we use for that. <laughs> and imagine the first day in the office when that box comes in. Oh, it's nothing but dildo fights. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there would sure. be dildo fights all through the building. Viz would lose her mind because, you know, all of the HR so we, problems. So we have, like, two guys who are on those, like, little Segway things that are, like, the two separate feet Segway. I don't know what they're the called. They're, they're, like, they're hoverboard, yeah, they're like but hoverboards. one for each foot. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they like to ride around the the office. And every time they do, my boss looks at me and goes, we're a dot-com company. Like, <laughs> he, loves to make, he loves to make that joke. Um, and then I would I could just see them, like, on those hover boards like oh, jousting, jousting, jousting yeah. oh yeah the, absolutely i mean they also go outside and skateboard and like run into each other so it's pretty yeah. close that's some nerd shit there's that we we are a we make fun of aren't, aren't you though. guys coming up with a skate deck too yes we have a skate deck coming yeah. out soon it's going to be exclusive at cons we're mm-hmm. not mailing it out wowie so we, Daya don't have to worry about that Thank God. oh yeah okay Daya Daya katana is my favorite Daya katana is uh john romero mm-hmm um, right after Doom Quake, uh, so he was not actually associated okay. with this marketing campaign. Uh, I talked, I talked to him literally a year ago this yeah. past week. I asked <gasps> him about it, really, because my boss has told me not to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, so you're like breaking the rules, breaking the and, law, um, breaking the law. And I just straight up asked him. I was just like, "Was that a thing? Like, was that your idea?" And he was like, "No." So the guy who currently runs, um. Uh, what's that developer? Digital Devolver? Yeah. The guy who runs Digital Devolver came up with that advertising campaign. Interesting. What is it? uh, John Romero will make you his bitch. (laughs) So John Romero is the guy, one of the co-creators of Doom. I know who John Romero is. Thank you very much. I'm on his website, actually, so. That's right. You are on his website. Motherfricker. I forgot about that. (laughs) Your art? No. No, Picture of me. Oh. Pagging his game that we did at London Run. 
it's me like Brittany was the one girl packing. so, so like, for a while I was the only girl on the shipping team so all the pictures were me I love mm. that it's also like your cleavage is out in it as well no I have a I you have, have a, a little bit of something there. no I don't it's just a regular t-shirt is it okay yeah it's a unisex t-shirt it's just a very cleavagey t-shirt I guess <sighs> it's not at all actually he's full of shit <laughs> <laughs> I remember he's, boobs he's building a secondary mental image that's how he wishes it was mm-hmm. maybe yeah. May- I'm not gonna deny that <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was for this game that was supposed to be like the next doom mm. called diakatana and it, it was wasn't. all it wasn't <laughs> number one it wasn't but they they took out all of these like full page ads in like game informer and, yeah. and magazines like that and it was just a black background with john romero will make you his bitch <laughs> yeah and it's just a picture of john romero great that's really funny actually uh which is why he like he was like the first rock star game developer yeah. at least in a western Jesus. culture it's mm-hmm. i'm so glad we're moving away from that yeah, yeah. because that's dumb and exhausting it is it is because yeah. every mm-hmm. game is made by multiple people like mm-hmm. i don't care right. even hideo kojima games mm-hmm. are made by a bunch of people yeah but and you, uh, yes you can always tell when you're playing a hideo kojima game <laughs> but it is a uh, it is a group effort yeah right? Um, but yeah, he, uh, he's an interesting person anyways. Like when I met him, I was in a closet with the two owners of the company I now work for. And we basically all started talking about jizz for a half hour. (laughs) As you do. Yeah. So so John Romero is a weird guy. Bless him. Uh, Mm. (laughs) I I started working for our company and within two weeks, I met John Romero. It was a really weird situation. Yeah, he just happened to be like popping by to sign a bunch of copies of stuff. Yeah. Hey, what up? Yeah. Uh, Like a month ago, we had the guy who owns Ubisoft show up. uh, Not Ubisoft, uh, THQ. Mm. And he was just there and like, I shot the shit with him for a minute and I didn't even realize who the fuck he was. That's awesome. really weird. Um. No, go ahead. Jumping back to the thing Sorry. and not just Brian bragging <laughs> Let me about brag it. Brian brag 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 get it, Brian. You've I got a it. job. Let me my video game dick out here. <laughs> Brittany, do you um, have an answer? Honestly, like I growing up, I don't remember hmm. hardly any marketing stuff for video games. Uh, what made me want to play video games was just going to friends' houses and they had a console that I yeah. played with them. Um like the only game, the only commercials and stuff I can really remember are like the uh, the Crash Bandicoot outside of Nintendo, just like yelling with a megaphone. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just super into Where they that. They had the big furry costume. Yeah, yeah, and he's like little head is coming out of his mouth or whatever. Um, that was probably my favorite, just because it was like really annoying and disruptive, <sighs> and I was like into that chaotic energy. <laughs> there was some total '90s <laughs> well, that was, energy. That was yeah. the beginning of the Nintendo's for Kids campaign. Really, yeah. because, like Sega started it, but Nint- uh, PlayStation mm-hmm. really was. Just like this is a console yeah. for they, adults. Yeah, they had a lot of Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like they, the Crash Bandicoot. They had a lot of good fun ads games. in the nineties. Like mm-hmm. one of my favorites is the, their Jet Moto ad. It's yeah. basically a um uh a, a play off of a cops episode where they pulled over the dude on his jet thing. Is he like, <laughs> you, have a, you have a license for this? And then he just runs away. <laughs> and then eventually, like, uh, he finds him in someone's backyard. He's hiding under a kiddie pool. He <laughs> kicks it and goes, freeze, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, there was a yeah. The nineties were a really interesting time because that's when all of the games were trying to be edgy and cool. Yeah, and super hip. extreme. Extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also a big fan. I think the Halo games do a really good job marketing themselves. They, they, the Halo Three specifically <clears throat> for me had a really amazing like toy marketing campaign mm-hmm. where they had this like amazing mock up toy setup and they just did like really big close ups of stuff and oh, it was just yeah. like that was when they serious. did they did yeah, the yeah, yeah. Right. like this this fiction where a person mm-hmm. is in a yeah, like, museum mm-hmm. uh, they like interviewed a fake veteran <clears throat> of yeah. the war of the oh, war really? that, that they're in really cool. and it was mm-hmm. super awesome <clears throat> and they were like i remember seeing master chief yeah <laughs> 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 like he was they, a god among men or some bullshit but so one of my favorite things to do is to like go back and watch old commercials yeah. like that yeah um, Halo Three also did I Love Bees, which was oh, yeah, like the, the ARG. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
that that's was just intense. a weird website that was about bees and then <laughs> like people are doing cryptographic analysis on mm-hmm. images and finding like coded messages from oh, master cool. chief i had a friend who went to one of the boston sites oh. where they had like an actual like meetup yeah. over one of the arc things they were like be at this point uh, at this time, at this date, and whatnot, yeah. and they showed up, and like there was a clue underneath a brick, huh, in the walkway. It was really crazy, and that was the continuation. That was the next That's clue for wild. the thing. They actually took up some of the brick <clears throat> in the on the fucking city, and put a clue underneath mm-hmm. it. It was kind of intense. Wow. It's like geocaching, but weirder. It I, was. I love geocaching. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that all the time when I was you unemployed. You want to knit and geocache. Yeah, it's you'd be, true. You'd be down for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed the Kevin Butler ads for a PlayStation. Those were great. Yeah. Those were great. The Kevin Butler ads. I'm so sad that they got rid of him because he did an ad for a Nintendo DS. Uh, as well. I think so. Something like, like that. They got rid of him because he was the... He was the uh, I'm in charge of all of PlayStation guy, mm. and he's just like, "Hey, guess what? PlayStation Four is now two fifty instead of like four hundred dollars or some shit." And he'd walk around like, "You like video games? We got video games. Here's some bullshit cool ass video games." <laughs> and it was just like straightforward, like marketing that would appeal to any gamer. Yeah, it was just like. What do you want when you play video games? Good video games. It was no marking spill. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, check out these cool ass video games. That was it. It was perfect. Hmm. Um, but then they ended it because he also did like, he was a dad in like a Nintendo DS commercial or some shit. Yeah. Well, he, by the time that happened, like that campaign was, was it's pretty going done. on for, yeah, it was pretty done. It was like but a three year old campaign at that point. They tried to have, um, a kick off a side one with the, the, the PS Vita with this kid named Marcus <laughs> and he was in Vita. for like two <laughs> commercials. I mean, the, Sony didn't really attempt to do Vita stuff anyways. Yeah. Really. You guys remember that really fucking weird commercial for one? of the playstation consoles i can't remember which one but it had the like weird baby oh the playstation that was 3, 3 yeah. Yeah. commercial yeah, yeah it was I so hated bad that thing. what the, i don't know it's like a weird there's this weird cube and then there would be this baby in it and it would just like start crying and start <laughs> saying like backwards adult male voices and then like We've got the games. It was PS3. Super, and that was it. It, it was, was so bizarre. Is that, creepy. is that where Kojima got the Death Stranding? Maybe. Probably. Like it's mm-hmm. I, probably. Mm-hmm. The, but the PS3 launch day <laughs> ads were terrible. Yeah. For, I especially remember for a six hundred dollar game system. Yeah. So I, I don't really have a whole lot in my memory bank, but that's one I have. Definitely not my favorite, but so speaking <laughs> it's of one lo- I remember. Hey, speaking nightmares are fun <laughs> too. Speaking of launch day ad campaigns, the PlayStation Two had one of the best launch day ad campaigns of all time. One with like the globe and the nanites. Yeah, it was the PlayStation Nine. They were like, it just they were. It was an advertisement for this future game console mm. where like all these nanobodies go inside this person's brain and they experience all this amazing, cool video game shit. Yeah, and they're like, imagine what the future is. And then they're like, here's the beginning of our path to the future of the PlayStation Two. Play the- Zone <laughs> of the Enders. Zone of the Enders was bad. And yes. the Jam Pack. Yeah, come play so. Sonic Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> the worst version of it. <laughs> oh god, it was awful. Um, I will. Speaking of Sonic, mm, Final well, Fantasy X two. <laughs> I love that game. I, I love that game too. <coughs> I will fight for that you, game. You <laughs> would. We'll fight for it, people. Dude, that game was, came with controllers that were just two pairs of guns. It's like bayonetta. <laughs> <light. laughs> right. Um, my favorite. Uh, one of my favorite commercials though was uh for Sonic two. And it was where they take the game cartridge and the game thing, and they're like, it even makes Julian fries. And they were like trying to like soak up like uh, uh, stains on your couch with the Sonic 2 cart. Okay, oh yeah, and they remade it that. recently for Sonic Mania. It's like an infomercial. Yeah, type and it's just deal. like this dumb infomercial. It's like Sonic 2, not only can it be this a really fun <clears throat> game, but it does all this other household yeah. chores for you. And it sold me. And it actually, they made this whole. Sold them. <laughs> it did. I was. I had yeah, me a Sonic. <laughs> I never played Sonic before at this point. That was the reason I started playing Sonic. Oh, really? That yeah. was what got you into so it. I huh? I got my Sega Genesis on Sonic Tuesday. Uh, they had a whole please, campaign for please it. Please don't ever do that again. It was. That's what it was. It was Sonic Two came out on Sonic Tuesday. It came with a. If you bought it that day, if you bought Sonic Two and a Sega Genesis, you got Sonic One free. And my parents bought it and hid it for me till Christmas. 
That explains so much about your brain. And you were just so thrilled about Sonic Tuesday. Sonic Tuesday! I yeah. was so hyped about well, it. Well, now we have to talk about Mortal Monday and Fatal Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can, can you on. guess the game? Oh, well, I mean, Mor- that's basically Mor- Mortal, it. Mortal Kombat. I Mortal assume. Kombat. Yeah, Mortal Kombat Two was Mortal Monday, I believe. I don't. I, Fatal Frame. No. Fatal Frame. Oh no, Fatal I, Fury? I thought they did a Fatal Friday for Mortal Kombat as well. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, fatality, Fatal some shit. Fatality. Fatality. Mm. <laughs> oh, that didn't feel good. Don't supersize that. <laughs> nope. Um, I, 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 one of the ones I remember from childhood is. Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario has this really stupid ass jingle. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, uh, yeah. So, we, uh, when we did Cinco de Mario, we uh, put all the Mario advertisements on there. Mm. And my favorite one was always the Dr. Mario ad that would come There's up. There's a lot of really good ads in that little. He's got the cure. It was cool. It was great. There's a lot. Uh, for the other one that would do would be the Dr. Mario Game Boy commercial, which was. Pure, pre, pretty racist, but it had this like voodoo guy who's just like, mm. yeah, Here comes witch doctor, da, 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 da. and it just changed all the lyrics to like Dr. Mario lyrics. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. And I then he would that. just like bang on this kid's head and be like, oh, I'm playing Dr. Mario now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bizarre. Man. But I love those 90s ads. TLDR, the 90s were fucking weird. Halo does good things. Um, uh, Only one more. Um, I will say that. The best uh, uh, N- Nintendo ad, in my opinion, <clears throat> ever. Just real quick. Nope, we're done. Was for no, Sonic- we're done. Oh, I'm doing this. Sonic Mario Run had the best one. A fucking mobile uh, game, but it just had all these like kids running like Mario, making Mario sounds, and it like was so good. It even was like I got sentimental watching it. <laughs> and then it's for the dumbest <laughs> fucking game ever, but it was just an amazing ad. Did you say Sonic Mario Run? No, or? no, Super Mario Super Run. Mario Run. He did say <clears throat> Sonic Mario Run. I like first. Sonic a lot, okay. y'all. Sorry. Is that like Sonic? Is it like a Temple Run game? But it's it's Mario, but like ba- yeah, yeah. yeah. Except you one button and it makes him jump. He automatically he runs. automatically runs, and you have to hit the button to make him jump and shit. So. It's an okay game. <laughs> yeah, fucking mobile games. Have you, yeah. Did you see the uh, Super Mario Land uh, or Super Nintendo World thing? The commercial. I haven't seen the, it yet. No. Okay, it's kind of similar to that. Okay. In a way, so. Yeah. Um. The only, yeah. The only <laughs> last one I would say is that the Pokemon commercial from the twenty or the twentieth anniversary recently, where they had a guy who was just like having an everyday boring like life at office, and he was just like having a hard day. Yeah, it resonated he, with you. Yeah, and he walked. <laughs> yeah, he walked down this road, and he walked past this game store. And he's just like looking in it, and it's the brand new Pokemon, right? Yeah. And then it goes into his head, and he just remembers getting the original Pokemon yeah. when he was a kid. And he just had some bunch of happy memories. And he goes in the store, he gets the new Pokemon, he goes home, and he has more happy memories or whatever with the new Pokemon. It's a, I it was bought a good my original Pokemon at <coughs> a Toys R Us in yeah. Winston Salem, North Carolina. Yeah. I borrowed it from Joe. I have, <laughs> I have so many memories from that Toys R Us. Oh yeah, my god, man. that's crazy. Yeah, I've got quite a few. Yeah, too. I played Mario sixty four in that one mm-hmm. on like these giant screen. They had yeah. like a demo set up. So yeah, the Toys R Us kids commercial was a pretty uh, like video game ad in general too. Like they did that quite a bit, and I was like, yeah, okay, cool. That's where I'm going to go buy video games. Five video games, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We'll take five video games, please.